Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, tell the audience what we're going to be talking about today? Because I know we do not have a guest. That's right. Yeah, this is two of three for a breakout of the Family Feud show that we did. I'm having a bit of fun with you here, um, and and this kind of this came to me from some of the feedback that we had from um, the panel, the team Vidyard. So Tyler specifically was saying, you know, what, this was so much fun. I think probably one thing if you wanted to do it a little better next time is sprinkle in some do this, don't do that content in and around what we did. So this is us doing that in some way. So. Last time we did a email round and this time we're going to do, as we did in the show, a calling round. And then next time we'll do a sales manager round. So um, the question was on the show, name something that buyers, prospects, whatever word, say when they're being cold called to get off of the phone. Now, I think let's let's go through a couple of cliche funny ones that you've heard. I'm sure you've heard plenty of them. And then let's go for what would be a, a good thing to say if you're the salesperson to kind of negate that as best you can because there's so many corny phrases that salespeople say that just raise the alert straight away and then that means they're going to get hung up on or or those things are said but you know you probably received quite a lot of cold calls i've been starting to get loads of late i don't know why but i'm starting to get i hear the same type of thing so corny stuff um what do salespeople say that's corny and uh, why would you want to get off the phone well what have you heard of late well see i hate when somebody cold calls me but right away, as soon as they open their mouth, I either I know it's a cold call. So I almost like when people, I, as I said, I think I've mentioned this message several times, is I rather actually have someone, their first line say, hey, by the way, this is a cold call. It's gonna, I'm going to take, can I have 30 seconds of time? I like that. But if I want to go through some bad ones, I hate when people say something like, is now a good time? Well, well as soon as you say, I, is now a good time? Like, I know what you're about to put pitch. And I would say the one I really hate the most, Ollie, is um, I'm sorry for bothering you. Because don't be sorry, you've just called me anyway. You, if yeah, like you're not sorry. You just picked up and dialed my number. So why are you telling me you're sorry? You're not sorry. You're you're doing your job, and I get it. Your job is to cold call, but like, don't beat around the bush. Don't lie to your prospect. I always am like, be upfront, be yourself, and even be sometimes even be witty. Be a little bit witty to try and get it. But those are the two that really bother me. Um, and I, I also hate the small talk. Just like in an email, you, you shouldn't say, you know, hey, hope you're well. How are you doing today? Something like that. Uh, that typically doesn't work because um, if I'm going to an appointment, I'm on my computer, I'm picking my daughter from daycare, I'm doing something. And you're going to say, hey, how are you doing today? Well, I'm busy. Like, you know, what do you? What do you want? Give me that 30 second pitch. So those would be the few that really bother me. Um, and as I said, we can probably go through some good ones after, but those are the three that come to mind. What about you? Um, similar. Um, I actually don't mind as much the how are you doing thing, but I I don't refute that as much. I think it's just um, I'm very quick about the response. I just go, yeah, I'm good you because I want them to get on with it so that I know whether it's worth it or not. So similar to you. I find... Um, the launching into something that's really dreary and long and drab and it's you, you've you've heard it before it's like hello my name is gary and i work for this company the leading provider of blah 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 blah, blah. and it's like so long and they haven't asked you anything and it's there's no you know question there's no can i carry on there's no it's just they've launched into it and it, it could be like 2 minutes sometimes when they're just talking at you Oh, it's so boring. Yeah. And when you're just stood there listening for two long minutes, it feels like forever. So especially when you're talking to someone, we have a very quick dialogue back and forth, but we interrupt each other all the time. With that's just how we talk. So especially when I'm like that, two minutes is an awful long time to sit there and just listen to something I don't even want to hear, really. So that's that's my number one one. And probably the tone, like what you said, I don't mind so much when you hear, Hey Sean, this is honestly a cold call. You mind if I tell you why I'm calling? That sounded fairly genuine. If it's, hey, Sean, do you mind if I tell you why I'm calling? Just, oh, come on. Like, stop reading it so robotically, yeah. please. Like, actually own it. Sound like yourself a little bit. That, yeah. Those are the ones that get me going. Well, and there's, there's two more things to add because one, well, first thing I'll say is it's not even a phrase. And we've talked about this, Ollie, many times is 
I hate when there's a three, four second delay before the person speaks. Oh, that, yeah. You and you can hear the background noise that. and you can't really hear them very well. Oh, it's yeah, painful. Yeah, okay. But I will tell you one I've been getting lately. And funny enough, they've called me four times from the same company. Not going to say – but their company, they don't even know, is actually a client of Auto Close as well. But I hate when people call me and say, hey, I'm calling from so-and-so and I have a company that is looking for exactly what you do. You know, they're looking for uh, – and they're reading it off the script. And then I, I actually sometimes ask them, I go, what, what, is do? doing, what is Autoclose doing 10 seconds? Well, you book a point. You, no, you, you called me. You don't even know what we did. And they're telling me their first line is, we have a client that's looking for exactly what you do. So I, I've, I've hated that line just because over the last two weeks, I think I've done four of them. And the first two I ignored. And the second two, I was like, you have 20 seconds to tell me what auto closes. And not one person has been able to actually say what we've done. So those would be the phrase that I, I tend to dislike. Um, but, you know, and I've also had people, I don't know if you had, like, uh, they want to excuse themselves on phone. I just want to excuse myself, but I need, you know, I'm, I, I'm calling you because. Like, you're not excusing yourself. You're calling me. You're not, you're not sorry. You're not excusing yourself. Hmm. Um, I haven't had that. Ones, yeah, I've had those recently. Um do and people mention company, what you do much? I'm, I'm finding that's also quite a long, dreary thing that people say sometimes. They'll, they'll say, and it, it's sort of personalized, but it isn't. Um, like Stating really obvious things that everybody knows is not personalizing. That's just a statement. So that I often get something like, and they always try and fluff you up a little bit too. They'll say like, when I speak to other demand generation legends, gurus, experts like you, and I'm like, oh, yeah. oh. Like, how many people have you just said that to in a row? Like, come on. Oh, yeah. And like, I know that is roughly what my title says. All right, fine. But, oh, come on. And then it's that, then they'll say something really obvious, like, um, you are really concerned with growing pipeline and generating leads. I'm like, oh, no yeah. shit. Or if and, I'm a sales leader, it's you are concerned with closing oh, yeah. deals. And I'm like, wow, you have researched me. Yeah, please like, proceed. When it's all done through a script, I've gone somewhere. They call me and be like, "Hey, uh, are you the manager of Auto Close, a vanilla soft company?" Like, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. LLC I'm like, Inc. I'm like, did you, did you did you look on LinkedIn and just you know put that into your script? I'm like, well, we're Auto Close, but like, is, and just like you said, they, they'll they'll read like the headline of your website just to do it. But uh, let's move over to some good ones because honestly. As I've mentioned, the one that I just I personally would actually give thirty seconds if somebody goes, "Hey, Ollie, this is a cold call. This is what I get paid to do. It's my job. Can I have thirty seconds of your time?" Most people are going to be like, oh, "It's your job. Let me listen for thirty seconds, etc." So I I'm one of those people when you're cold calling, just be upfront. Do you do you like that one or no? I'm fine with that too. I, I'm more often inclined to say, "Yeah, sure, go for it." Yeah. Um, but then if it's not of any use, I'm not going to like tolerate the phone call for however long they want to stick around. So that works for me, um, for sure. I think a lot of that is the tone though. A lot of that is your natural competency and your willingness to go with it. So if, if, if you said it the way that you said that then to me on a cold call, I'm cool with it. And then you can say, uh, hopefully the follow-up isn't like a three minute spiel, but yeah, for sure. I, I'm definitely fine with, Hey, look, you know, it would be like talking to your mate and saying, "Hey, look, I'm in trouble. Can I? I need to tell you something. Tell me what you think." And then most yeah. people go, "Yeah, sure, no worries." It's the same type of style. You need to sort of own it. But if it sounds contrived, then it's when things sound like they're a, a tactic. I don't like it. So the other one that I like, I'd love to hear your opinion because I've used this one. I mean, I haven't done much cold calling in my day, um, but I've you know I've listened and I've I've done. I, when I get cold calls, I just do random stuff. But um, I've actually liked. When I say to somebody, you know, hey, are you in the middle of something? And if they go, yes, you don't have to waste your time on any more on saying anything else. You just get off the phone. If they go, oh, no, I'm good. Oh, you know what? Give me 30 seconds of your time. This, this is a cold call, but I just need 30 seconds of time. They're not going to now say, oh, I am in the middle of something. They've already told you they're not in the middle of something, right? So you've already now got yourself that, you know, hopefully 30-second pitch. So that's one that's worked in my my short cold calling career. but. Um, uh, I, I think I've made, I think in, in, in 2014, I made a few cold calls, but I haven't done many since then. But that was one that uh, really did work, you know, asking people right away if, if they're in the middle of something. Okay. I'm going to tell you the first um, script I ever made and I want you to critique it. Okay. Okay. Put myself on the line here. So, you know, be cool. Yeah. 
don't don't like completely annihilate me um so i was calling this was a test for vanilla soft when i first joined i was calling uh legal software companies so if you sell like a how a legal company runs their ops or something tool uh, and my assumption was they probably don't like email pick up the phone talk to them uh, i'm an english guy from england i'm talking to a people on the east coast of america i'm probably one of the only english people who they're going to talk to in any given week by nature of where they live so i lent into that so I said something like, hey, Sean, uh, I'm hopefully going to be the only English cold caller that speaks to you today. Would you mind, if, would, would you mind if I had a minute to tell you what I'm calling you about? I lent into I, I the, can I carry I on? 30 seconds. I'm English and different. Sort of a bit of fun about it. Yeah, no, I love it. I, I love when you, you when there's some sort of, you're not, you don't sound like a robot. There's some sort of personality behind the call. Um, and it's funny you say that because I did something similar recently. I actually was t telling one of our sales team, I'm like, just try this, you know, on your, on your cold calls. And I, I haven't actually shared it with you, but I'd love to get your opinion on it too. So you could make the call and you say, hey, uh, Ollie, will you help me with something? Person goes, okay. They're like, you know, I get paid to make 60 calls a day. You're just one of those 60 calls. Will you give me 30 seconds of your time? People always appreciate when you say it's your job. It's like, you know, people are always – there, there's millions of jobs out there. Everyone's trying to do some sort of job. So when you tell them it's your job, it's like, okay, I'll give you 30 seconds. But when you see something like, would you help me with? I find that that works at the beginning. Um, just like we talked about, I must have caught you at the wrong time. Those are there are a few that have worked. Um, and funny on our team, I had Jordan uh, use that one recently. And he, you know, it might have not turned into sales, but you do get those conversations. And at the end of the day, you know, it, it's better to have at least some conversation than having somebody just hanging up on you all day and, and, and getting rejected, right? The, the rejection sometimes can hit the ego. The way you said that, I think I, if it's exactly that, I think I would make one small tweak. Um, this is just my personal style coming across a little bit. Um, the way that you said, um, you're just one of those people on my list of 60, I think I would spin that and make it more of a positive and more of like a funny angle. So I would say something like, it, with a bit of sarcasm in the tone of your voice make this come across but um hey sean uh, just being honest i'm a cold caller and i've got 60 calls to make today you're one of the very lucky few people that i'm dialing to today like that is a bit different to you're just one of the 60. what if you just say you're the only one that's answered me <laughs> that is way better yeah i love that because they're, they're gonna feel like super special and they'll they'll probably laugh yeah that's brilliant so just like that positive angle means i think if you get the the, the gate where it's can i tell you yes or no yeah you'll get the conversation but the quality is probably up if their mood's a bit up based on what yeah. you said being a bit more funny there was one i read online and i actually somebody said it was a good one i don't really love it and it was um when you call and you say i'm glad i've reached out and on my end as a prospect i'd be like well i'm not <laughs> like yeah so thanks. it was actually one that he claims work so you just say i'm glad i've reached out and then you start your pitch but to me it's just like uh, no, I'm not glad you reached out. Like I, you know, I get, get six of these a day. I don't really want to talk to, um, you know, someone. So that's one that uh, I've heard, but I don't know if you like it, dislike it. I, I don't see what that adds personally. Um, I, I'd be interested in hearing whoever said that explain it, but it's, that's like a cool thing for you to say, but it's, it doesn't impact me, the, the other person. So I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know. Any other good ones that uh that you've seen lately? Um well, I th I think we're like hammering if my LinkedIn is just full of this stuff, it's the only tactic that seems to be spoken about at the moment is can I tell you why I'm calling, which I'm a little bit bored of. Oh, um, I hate it. Yeah, I think it works. Yeah, sure, and something else will replace it at some point, but I don't know if I feel like not every job can do this, so I totally understand. But I feel like the the more you can just be having a chat and you know how to steer it, it's miles better. Because if I said, look, if I call you tomorrow and it says something like, hey, Sean, um, as a founder like yourself, I'm sure you're concerned with increasing revenue or something like that. Um, can I tell you a hidden tactic to help you grow revenue 20%? And if on the off chance you say, yeah, sure, then I sound like even more scripted and I've got an even more repetitive predetermined message. That's just not yeah. how people talk. And it doesn't feel very good. It feels a bit awkward and weird 
to listen to that. And it's a bit yeah. like the whole yes theory thing where you keep going, ask, ask questions that the yes, that the yes is the answer to. People know they're being yes So people know they're being, you said yes to this, I say that. You said no, I say that. They know. So as much as you can be a bit more, you know, fluently competent yourself, I, I feel like that feels better. But that, that's not every job. But that's just yeah. Well, I do like your UK one. That's a good one. That was it didn't a, work that good. I had one guy, he hung up, I called him back and he told me to F the hell off and never come back. <laughs> but a few people YouTube gave me the time. Anyway, so. that, that's nothing new for me. And I, pro I was thinking you were going to drop some sort of Tinder joke in there about that it happens to me every day. So. <laughs> Perfect. Well, anything else before we uh, finish this episode? Any other good or bad ones that you can think of the top of your head? Speaking of scripts, you can get your outro script up and wrap this episode up. Sounds good. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today for this episode. Um, if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Also, if you have any guests you want to bring on the show or have us bring on the show, please let us know. Once again, Ollie, thank you so much.